Hi and welcome to the Prusa podcast. Today we have a very special guest. Uh, we're joined by David Hewlett. Uh, and also, of course, there's Joe Prusa. Hello. And David, who you maybe now know as the Hi. Prusa guy, our in-house maker. The uh, Prusa guy? You the Prusa guy? Is that yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's his handle. Very good. Uh, David, it's great to have you here. We, oh my God. we toured the whole company today. Yeah. And the uh, weekend you were in Prague for Comic-Con. How, how, how was it? Oh, my God. No, it's been amazing. I Honestly, I got to say, though, not to geek out too much, this has been like the highlight for me. I was like, we're going to Prusa. And Jane's like, my wife is like, no, no, you're going to you're going to you're going to Comic-Con Prague. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, yeah, that's first. And then, you know. But yeah, like it's just been it's just been extraordinary. Like I've been sort of dreaming about this place since we I remember when we started talking on Twitter, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple of years ago. A couple yeah. of years ago, yes. And you've been on our podcast before. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. been like free. But not here with the free coffee. Three years ago, yeah. yeah but we streamed that I I don't think you went from we were in other building before, mm -hmm. so we moved since then. It it's, was live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was very exciting. That's right. Yeah. No, but it's just been amazing because I've got to see the entire the entire process. I've of course, you know, like I've built now two of of, of these of these printers. And uh, you had just, you started with the Mark II, right? The Mark II, yeah. The Mark II is still being used. So one of my Tech Bandits kids has the Mark II because he bought, didn't ask me, went and bought some other brand, had some trouble with it, and has a robotics club that he works on. And what does he do? He picks up the Prusa II, <laughs> and that gets dragged back and forth all over the place because it's just it's bulletproof. It's just it's amazing. Yeah. So and now you you have the Mark III. Uh, the Mark III, yes, yes. I was doing some multi filament stuff, but honestly, for me. It's mainly just I, the single filament does it for for most of it for me. So we should upgrade you to the Mark IV. Uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. okay. That's the shameful. Yeah, that's it. And that's yeah, what I'm here for. I heard it's a beg for printers. That's uh, David it. Nickel, your yeah. your colleague was. He wimped out though. He was <laughs> he was like, I want to uh, see the alpacas, and then he's gone. I'm like, dude, you're missing out on. The to be stuff. fair, yeah, I kind of get it. Every place we went to, you you just. Got very excited about it, which we really appreciate. But yeah, he didn't know anything about 3D printing. I, Does he know I, nothing about it? Really? I think when he came here first, he was all kind of new for him. I talked to him about it a little bit, but it's sort of, I mean, it's one of those things that it's its a different world, isn't it? I mean, you get, it yeah. depends what you use it for. And David is very outdoorsy. He's got a boat. He's got, you know, nice. he's, the you know, the Vancouver people, they're always, they're swimming with whales and climbing mountains and stuff. I'm in my basement. You so know, maybe you, my... you can have a little build off of Mark Forrest. That's and... it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah some weaponry. We could have like a little battle or some sort. Yeah. But also the tour, the deluxe tour was yeah. like six hours. Was it six? It was about six. How long has it, it been? Yeah, I, um, actually, yeah, we started at 11. I mean, we had lunch. But, yeah. It's so funny because everyone looks a little more tired now, but not me. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 I don't know why. Yeah. No. It's just... I don't know. Just for me, it's like this is like the science fiction I dreamt of when I read Neuromancer or or, you know, you know, or, or watching Star Trek or any of this kind of stuff. This is the stuff that you dreamt of happening. Right. I mean, that, the, you know, this these things were possible that that that, um, you know, that the automation side of it, it's I, what I love about it is that it, it pulls together. It pulls together so many different elements that I'm interested in. It's like I. I thought I wanted to be an actor and then I got on set and I realized I love all the technology. I love the sets and the props and the, and the 3d printing side of stuff is just and the manufacturing of this stuff now has just been revolutionized by that. And I think the cosplay stuff is ahead of the film industry. Like they're, they're building their own stuff and they're doing a better job. I mean, you know, this will get me in trouble on set. I'm going to get beaten up by, <laughs> by teamsters or something, but, but honestly they're built for like that one shot. Well, they're built for that one scene. These cosplayers are figuring out how it's going to last for forever. You know what I mean? And, and pack it in a small carry on yeah. and survive. And be able to wear it without someone yeah. feeding you drinks and, you know, all the rest of it. So Actually, well, I think what we've seen with some of the recent Maker Fairs and, for example, Open Source is mm. that the people from the community are now becoming the the gurus of making props that yeah. the big studios are going to because like yeah. you say they were doing it in their free time and they got so good at it that maybe these days they're in some cases like really on par at least or I even better that, honestly i think better because i think it's the same thing with filmmaking as well when you're making when you're actually working on a project if you've got the time and the passion to invest in, we were talking about this, like Unreal Engine and, 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 and any of the special effects, like After Effects, all that kind of stuff. You can make things that are far better than the Hollywood stuff that's being made because every, every frame of it is perfect to you. Whereas on the, on the big budget stuff, 
you're building things as cheaply and as fast as possible to get out in, in time for whatever the summer blockbuster release dates are, or whatever that kind of stuff is. So I feel like there's a there's a potential now for us to sort of eclipse. I'll I throw myself on this as well <laughs> for the nerds uh, to sort of eclipse this the 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 filmmaking possibilities of of the Hollywood stuff. I mean, there are short films that I'm seeing on YouTube now that have better props, better effects. Uh, not always better acting, but um, you know than than most of the films that I that I that I've been a part of. So you know. and yeah, I think the Comic Con was a great showcase of that. Yeah. Uh, David, you had some talks about using 3D printing. What did you do? Oh, really? I couldn't get out there. I kept getting. Yeah, we have uh, I think the two panels of um, cosplay. Mm. So how to make a cosplay from your 3D printing right. stuff? Right. And I think all about the uh, cosplay scene now. What what we can see. Mm. It's a full of full of really great, really great stuff. Yeah. Also, also, I think uh, when when you are doing cosplay, you know, there is no, uh, and you are on the show floor. Mm. There is no way to fix it in both, so it has yeah, to be perfect. Yeah. It's got to work. That's right. Yeah. It has to look good yeah. in person. No after effects. Yeah, those malfunctions yeah. can be very embarrassing. And also, th there is a big part of the cosplay is the acting. Yeah. Because yeah. when you when, when you can walk like the character, when you That's true. when you have the move yeah. of it. It, it'll be a lot better. And I love the examples that you brought in there where David had the Iron Mask front plate, the yeah. like the signature front piece. And you had it with like print, straight out of the printer after sending, after oh, painting. The different levels, yes. And, oh. and people love loved that. Like, yeah. you know, they could see the different stages of, of the post processing. And then in the end you have something that looks like AAA production yeah. level prop. Yeah. That's shiny. It's, it has all the imperfections that Or you crack. want there. And now also yeah. when you have a multicolor printer, so you can print, you can wear it straight out of the printer. Yeah. 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 I was going as a Star Lord. Oh yeah. And yeah. I had a helmet from the Five Tool XL, and it was like the showcase of I can't paint. For I I, I tried. Trust yeah. me, but I'm not good at at painting by hand. So it's perfect for me because yeah. I can just do the hard work uh, with the mouse on the computer right. and then send it to the Excel and it did the five colors for me. And I, if you look really closely, you could see that it's just five colors of plastic. Right. But as soon as you were me one meter away from it me, matter, it yeah. was just yeah. completely fine. Yeah. So maybe not for the hero shots, but for the crowds, uh, you could save some money on doing a ton of expensive VFX yeah. just to have people wearing free and printed. You, yeah. you save a lot of time with the uh, with the bus processing yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. true yeah so when you when you uh, last it or or crack it it doesn't matter you can print you fix it one. yeah well i was saying one of my so i the, the same tech man kid i was talking about who has my my uh my my two mark two um he confessed later that he he was he was uh calibrating it and he snapped something and so he printed another part in the same color filament And replaced it, and then told me later that he fixed it. But that was, <laughs> so that was great, you know. But that's that was an interesting thing actually. Because this was that, you know, I think I think there's a tendency, especially that I'm seeing like in the schools and stuff, of they they're like, oh, we're 3D printing, as if like the printing is the thing. Like, oh, look, there it is, it's printing, and they're not teaching the kids how to use the software. You know, like they got to design stuff. Otherwise, we're just building. Otherwise, just we're just printing toys. It's not about yeah. just printing toys. It's about, you know, it's about sort of. Being able to to customize and modify stuff. That's why I love seeing, you know, when you get into the cosplay and the the mixing of the different franchises yeah. and stuff. You know, where they gets when it when it gets customized. That's what yeah. I get excited. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think that you you got a good point when uh, when we are talking about teaching 3D printing, it should be mm -hmm. more about like designing and using yeah. the technology and not just printing the stuff which is made. Yeah. Uh, and especially with, with tools like Tinkercad, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's like building little Legos and it's yeah. super easy to dive into it. And you just open the black box for the uh, for the kids because, you know, sometimes people, you know, just accept products as they are mm -hmm. and they never think about how they work mm -hmm. on the inside. Which, you know, me as a kid, I was fortunate that our parents let us uh, like open and disassemble everything. They didn't let me, but I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. did it anyway. Yeah, it was the putting them back together I had the problem with. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, this is a little bit of a different different way how to mm. achieve the same thing. Yeah, the Black Box thing is really interesting because that's something I'm I was obsessed with, was the idea that, you know, the kids would have like a, you know, they've got like a PlayStation and they get the new PlayStation and the other one just gets thrown out. I'm like, what? 
what are you talking? Why would you throw it out? And it's like you take it apart. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like a whole someone. Uh, the best, the best response I got was a kid went like, "There's a whole world in here," you know. And I was like, "Yes, that's like that's it," you know. And they're like, you know, but what if I break it? I was like, "It's broken. It doesn't matter," you know. And it's just. And from that, once you start pulling stuff apart, you start thinking about different ways of putting it together again. I mean, that's truly that's hacking in the real sense of the word. And I think once you get the first, you either fake something or you materialize your idea, you free model it and things yeah. like that. And you get that first print and you hold it in your hands. I, every, at least I had it and yeah. everyone I know had that like aha moment when it clicks yeah. and you're like, yeah. I, can, I can make things yeah. and they will be real in real life and I can make anything I want yeah. as long as I manage to, to design it. And from that on, you just need to let that person be and You come back a year later, and they will have fifty different pretty printed things That's in their it. home. And I joke that it's uh, it's uh, the three D printers are like tattoos; no one ever gets one. There's always yeah, like yeah. you always end up with multiple three D printers. But yeah, that's definitely it. I mean, I feel like once you there's also like I think people are people crave something original, something you know, something concrete, something mm. that is that that is theirs, you know. And I feel like if you can. You know, with a 3D printer and the design software, you can – I mean, look, with 3D with 3D skills, basically, kids can get into any field they want. I mean, there's everything from data visualization to, to you know, video games to the medical industry. I mean, there's, the architecture, there's almost nothing you can't do that the 3D yeah. design and, the, and understanding those concepts won't enhance you, you for. So I think that's – You know, but but the idea that you can actually, as you say, come out with something. You've got I built I built this. There's nothing like that. That feeling of like, yes. you know, whether it's a wooden box that you've carved or you know or whatever. And it is especially uh, especially enabling for the kids uh, which are growing up in cities mm. in a smaller apartment and stuff. Yeah. Because I I grew up uh, in a village, yeah. and you know there there was. Um, Always plenty of space to do projects outside mm. and stuff, but and, and workshop where you can go grab tools. Yeah, mm. But you know, when you when you are in a smaller apartment, the the 3D printing is uh, not it's not very messy, so mm. you can you can learn to design yeah, and contained. make and yeah, make, yeah. make things uh, while doing some other projects. You know, a, on a kitchen table might not be as appreciated. Yeah. That's true. If you go into like uh, resin casting or something and suddenly <laughs> everything is sticky and gooey and yeah, there yeah. are paper towels everywhere and your parents... It's like having a kid too. Everything's sticky. Once, yeah, you, once you have a kid in the house, everything you touch is sticky. Yeah, but I, then you yeah. then you start the post-processing the prints and yeah, yeah. And the mess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess you know that very well. <laughs> but it's funny. We talk about kids. It, I feel like it's not just kids too. I mean, I do think it's like the grown-up kids as well. I think there's a... You know, I've seen a lot of people sort of moving... You know, especially during the pandemic, I found there's a lot of people whose they ch the perspectives changed. I mean, my, certainly mine did as well. Um, you know, where people suddenly went, you know what? I've always wanted to do this, mm -hmm. and then you know, and then the 3D printers show up, and they're building these, or they're doing that. It's a part of their a part of their you know, their, it's, they've got an Etsy shop, or they've got some kind of artistic thing that they want to do. I mean, I think it's so important, you know, to have those. I mean, in a way, it's kind of an artisan thing. I mean, weirdly, that a 3D printer would be that. Yeah, good. it's it's great. It's bringing the Uh, the hassle of starting something up mm. very low mm. uh, because when, when you, for example, when you want to prototype a product and you are mm. doing it in the, in the traditional ways, it, it always takes a lot of yeah. uh, resources to get. And money. I mean, and, yeah. yeah. And, and prototypes made. So this way you can b prototype and mess with your idea basically for free mm. if you compare it to the standard way of creating a product. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. I feel like, you know, we're talking about the the being in the cities. I started wondering, you know, they build a lot of these of you know there's the condominiums going up all over the place in in Toronto. And and I thought, you know what? They should have they should have a makerspace. Like they should have a make a community makerspace at the bottom of every single uh condominium. You know, one of them maybe each block should have one because you got all those kids stuck in a tower somewhere. I mean, you've got old, you know, you've got older people who are people who know how to do other skills. Maybe they're, you know, whether it's from knitting or painting or whatever. You know, what if there's a space for them to to? I mean, then it becomes a community, not just a block of flats. You know, um, and I actually wondered about even just talking to the government about it because they have all these they have all these laws about you know green spaces and how they can build and stuff. And I thought like, what a what a community space. Yeah, the workshop. You know? Yeah, yeah, you know, something like that where people yeah, that, could be doing. That's stuff. why we have cottages. 
Yeah, you guys have. Well, we have cottages too. That's the problem. Yeah. Ours are, you know, that's just for getting attacked by bears. Bears. We are. We are pretty small countries. So yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, but every chick person has a like cottage or yeah, bear... the cottage thing. <laughs> I, I, you but... got a chalet. You don't count. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's from the the times when we were uh, occupied by communists and we couldn't go abroad much. So everyone just built a little little. So that was your holiday. So your holiday was yeah. that you go to your cottage, yeah. and yeah, the cottage yeah. just obviously stayed. So even though it's been a while since uh, we we're like a free country that belongs to Ooh. the West, uh, now the kids of those parents own the cottages, so they still go there. Yeah. And, and everyone must show their their neighbors. I can do it myself. And I yeah, can do yeah. It oh, really? Yeah, oh, my nice. grass with, is greener with, and with I, everything with everything. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, we definitely have there's the, there's definitely the cottage culture. I uh you know, my motto is basically pave nature because I I like the city. But but um but that said, I I do it I think as I get older I'm I'm looking forward to spending some time. I joke that we're going to move back to England where my wife has a like a farm basically and I'll get a pig and a tractor. Although now I got to add an alpaca to that as well because mm-hmm. that those suckers I have never I've never had anything eat out of my hand so daintily. It's like it goes it just so slightly, yeah, yeah just amazing. And, and the two upper lips, they're like, oh yeah, nib- nibble. Yeah, they're like little, but it's like the little fluttering of butterflies, and then the, and then the and then the carrot disappears. It's amazing, yeah, yeah. So we touched up on the on the yeah. This whole conversation was partly about the STEM and educating the young. Mm. You last time we spoke, you had your tech bandits, yeah. Which, as I understood, was like a little after school club. Yeah, it was like an online. It's it became an online thing because mainly because of the pandemic. It started off in the school, and then there was a strike, and so they were in my basement. Okay. Um, and then there was the pandemic, and so we went online. And what's funny is since then, I continued it for a while, and then I started realizing, wait a second, they shouldn't be online now. Like they should. This is we. They shouldn't be hanging around talking to us. I started looking for other ways of making sort of education interesting. And one of the things that came up in one of our tech bandits was this escape room puzzle learning approach, which I got kind of fascinated in because the kids were really excited about it. I'd never done an escape room before. And I started doing some research on it. And one of the first things that came up was Cube, this film I did many, many years ago, being used as an example of why they built their escape room. So I was like, this seems like a great in for me. I start looking into it. I start doing these escape rooms. And we sort of came up with the idea of doing it as a as a learning. And did you do, did you do like the cube team? No, no, I'd like uh, to do that. I, <laughs> that's, I, yeah, I yeah. remember it as as a kid. Would yeah. be PGA uh, and, and I was very little. Yeah, and I remember that. It you was... calling me old? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that it was like the the horror movie, uh, and we kind of watched it uh, and we're yeah. from behind the sofa. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was so. That was Vincenzo's first film. That was the first film we did together. So I made films with him when he was well. We were like thirteen, fourteen at school. Like this is this is one of the things I and it's one of the things I really wanted to do with this with the escape room stuff was the idea of like how do you help kids find those little communities? How do you find like I was very lucky. I met a bunch of film nerds, and I was a film nerd, so we made films. You know, uh, now you know there's a few three D printing nerds who either they meet in the robotics club or whatever. How do we make that? easier to happen right and i thought well an escape room is kind of like a theater project except that it includes it can include the physics kids it can include the robotics kids it can include the artists it can include the even the even the freaking actors can be involved you know what i mean writers directors video mm-hmm. i mean that all could be a part of the process so i sort of had this vision of like could we be putting on escape rooms in the way that we put on school plays every year because I felt like it could it could tie into so much curriculum. So we started playing with it. The first one we chose, we decided to go with like the hardest possible one to do. We did biology. I was like, how the hell do you make it a biology escape room? But sure enough, we went, we there's a the wonderful professor um Ashok up at uh, uh, University of Toronto Scarborough and um uh and uh, Professor Mason, these two fantastic biology, um just wonderfully wonderfully crazy biology um professors. And so their fourth year class, their assignment was they had to build, uh, they had to write a theme. They had to build three puzzles that related to biology, uh, science communications for high school kids. Uh huh. And it was freaking amazing. They were like, they were like, COVID has mutated to COVID Z. They're all <laughs> zombies. And it's like, and they had like little, and I was, but the funny thing was I said to all of them, I was like, 
no 3D prints? Like, what do you what do you do? They had little pieces of paper they'd cut out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, you did that by hand? We could have put that on a 3D printer in a second. So I think we're going to try to, like, maybe, you know, automate some of that stuff a little bit for them. But But they came up with some really, really good ideas. They had little boxes with codes on it and stuff it was amazing it makes it makes sense yeah that you know the kids have to use the knowledge they yeah. acquired over over the courses yeah uh, to get uh, themselves out of the well, that's, escape room. that's it if they don't get out then they never escape they can never leave school because they can't find a door that's a good um, motivation yeah, if that's wanna, it if yeah. you want to leave you want to survive you got to get out um <laughs> but the other thing that i found was it wasn't just the pu- solving of the puzzle like that's mm-hmm. That's been done in school before where they'll bring in these puzzly things and the kids solve it. It's, yay, great. It's how do you apply it? So by making them design their own puzzles, Mm -hmm. they're literally taking their knowledge and reworking it for someone else. And that was a real... You know, spark for the, that I got excited about. Yeah, I mean, the more the more senses uh, you use during the uh, during the learning, the um, more it locks in. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it just seemed like, what a great, I mean, talk about, you know, we're learning 3D printing. You know, great, you're learning 3D printing by printing, you know, puzzle pieces or whatever. It just feels like there's a great, there's a, it's a great way to sort of pull all the different threads of curriculum together. Mm-hmm. And even now, um, you know, the professors were saying, the kids come in with these very, these pillars of learning. Mm-hmm. And they don't cross over. There's like, oh, there's the sciences. And then there's the theater way over there somewhere. And watching the kids... I shouldn't say kids because they're, I mean, they're grownups. I mean, watching the students, watching these students try to sort of tell a story around what they're doing um, was kind of eye-opening because because I didn't realize they just weren't doing that. If you're doing sciences, you're not writing stories, but they, they you could see them sort of enjoying the process of making the story as well. So Yeah, I think, uh, I think there is a big future in like merging the subjects together. Ooh, yeah. Because, I mean, the more context you use, uh, again, you That's remember it. more and you learn how to apply, yeah. apply the knowledge. And we need generalists now too, right? I mean, the, the specificity of all these various different yeah. focuses, I feel like we need people who can sort of bridge those, stand between those those in, in, in a way. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of fascinated to see where that, you know, where that can go. And the escape room just stuff just seemed, for some reason, they just sort of fell into place because it, it's, um, again, I think it's something that the kids understand. And it's also skills now that they have. Like the kid, they all play, you know, uh, Among Us. They all play uh, Fortnite. They understand the idea of unlocking things and puzzles, and it's innate to their to their play. And it's wonderful to see them in an escape room because they do the same thing. Like they're almost on radios. It's like, okay, you get that, I'll get this. Mm. They organize themselves in this way, but they're actually together as opposed to often separate computers somewhere. So yeah. the question is, Mikolas, when yeah. we will make our Rocha escape room. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We have the like bunker down here, which would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's one the one place where you haven't been during the tour. It's like an old nuclear shelter. Oh really? At the basement. Yeah. Oh, the there building. you go. Uh, the the main, the main building was built between the wars, right. and for the uh, if if you had certain square meters, you were required to have. Not nuclear, not nuclear shelter, but uh, for bombings. Yeah. Right. Right. So... I think we do some. Uh, Testing. Is that the new? Is that the or is that that's here somewhere? Or, or, that's the or... previous building. The, oh, is the it? Okay, right, right, right. I think we do some like radio noise uh, testing there, right? Because oh, really? it's so we, well shielded. We, we oh used yeah, to. yeah, yeah. We used to. Yeah, before we send it to this yeah, like expensive certification, right? Uh, we can tra- that do some like basic uh, testing in house. That we, seems we, like a small. I mean, that that'd be fun to we, do. We now have a proper place, but okay. yeah, that was uh, that was. Uh, uh, clever way how to get good uh, isolated chamber. Yeah, yeah. Well, and is, you wouldn't hear anybody like tunnels to the street. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. To the street. It's funny. I was talking to Hacksmith. Uh, I don't know if you ever watch Hacksmith stuff. It's yeah. A, yeah. So Hacksmith has just bought a, a property and is already talking about building some kind of like escape. <laughs> You know, system but there's a well. cu- couple of guys already built their mm-hmm. uh, backyard bunkers. Oh yeah, like uh, uh, Colin Furs. Yeah. You seen that? Oh my god, that yeah. guy's. I love it. No helmet, but a tie. You <laughs> know what I mean? The guy's on like rocket powered, um, you, you know, mobility out. scooter. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I got my tie on. It's totally is amazing, though. isn't he? Yeah, I was saying to Hacksmith, the mistake he made was Hacksmith built facilities. You know, whereas Colin just stayed his he just stayed in his little his little shed. <laughs> you know, it was a lot cheaper. You know, not having all the all the facilities. But uh, have you visited the Hacksmith stuff at all? Uh, I haven't. You got it sometime. It's amazing. It's re- really is. we 
Yeah, yeah if you yeah. Uh, both Colin and Hacksmith were at Open Source. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about it? About Open Source? No, no. No, it's you should check it out. You would love it. All the all, all the people, all the makers, yeah, and all the people you follow uh, were there. It was the, the first year. Oh, that was. Oh, I heard about that sort of after the fact. I heard about. it. Yeah. So really, the the event was wonderful. It's happening, yeah. I think, again this yes. year. Yes. So that's where we met uh, Hacksmith and right. uh, Colin. But I, we haven't been to to his place, oh, even it's, though it's pretty neat. I've seen yeah, some yeah. crazy stuff. I mean, you guys there. have some pretty great stuff too. I gotta say. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's definitely there might be some jealousy back and forth on there, but but uh, yeah. But it is it is it is really like a it's like being in in Iron Man. So what is it? It's like Tony Stark's. <laughs> yeah, he literally exactly. built like a Tony a Stark yeah, tower yeah, yeah. on the top and stuff. It's like it's it's freaking hilarious. He owns like half of Kitchener now. I mean, you know, um, yeah. That's the the community stuff is great too. I mean, I like I love the idea that you can have I mean, the the three D printing community was always I was amazed at how welcoming that was because there's the programming stuff. You know, it could get a bit nasty. You know, you get in there and ask a question and people are like, you're an idiot. Like, okay, yeah, I am. That's why I'm asking the question. It was the 3D printing community I always found very welcoming, whether they knew who I was or not. You know, I mean, even if you just posed as an anonymous question about something, you always got a response. You always got a follow-up. I was always amazed yeah. at that. There has always been a lot of in-person events for the 3D printing community. Mm. I think it comes also from, from the fact that you are creating something uh material Ooh, yeah so, uh the the events were always very popular because people can just showcase what they yeah, make. yeah yeah and yeah. it's thousand times better than if you just see a picture yeah no, it's so true we yeah. did we did uh brucia meetups in the u.s we did like a little tour and oh, we, yeah. we encouraged people to bring their projects and yeah you could see these circles forming and one person would take out their thing and then imme- they would explain what it is, what they're working on, what are the problems. And you immediately saw all the like different inputs they got from yeah. everyone else. And everyone had different ideas about what to do. And that person came out with like a head exploding yeah. with like, oh my God, I-, I have so many ideas about what I'm going to do with this project now that I've shown it to some people and got some feedback. So, Well, I think there's a tendency, I mean, I find this as well, there's a tendency to be sort of the lone nerd. And I think that's part of the... It's a bit of the science fiction thing, I think. I mean, maybe McKay's responsible for this to some extent as well, where it's like, only I can do this, and I got to do it alone, and everyone else should shut up, you know? And I think there's a tendency for people to believe that that's how you do things. And the reality is that's not how science works. You know what I mean? That's not how engineering works. It's a it's a process. It involves people. It involves mistakes. You've got to... This is the other thing I worry about is like, it's like, oh, it didn't work. It's like, well, then do it again. Yeah. If, if it worked the first time, you didn't learn anything. You know and what it's I mean? very, so, yeah, uh, you should be shocked. If, like, if it worked, yeah, if the, it worked first the first time, time something's like, wrong. It's like, yeah, it should yeah. be working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my it's, joke was always, it was like, oh, it worked. Damn it, we didn't learn anything. Well, <laughs> I mean, especially if it programming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this really works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you discover that there are five different problems but yeah. it just so happened that they all turn out that way that in the end the result was correct but yeah. then you try some different input and it just breaks completely i yeah the, the programming stuff i love and i've got to say one of the things i've been loving using um uh, chat gpt for is like the python programming because yeah. you know if there's something i don't understand i just go explain this to me it explains it to me i mean it probably makes stuff up but it seems pretty legit to me um and i'm finding that i'm actually i'm writing little scripts that work that yeah. do things whereas before yeah. i'd spend weeks just it was fun and i was learning but, you know but i wasn't getting the until yeah. it finished yeah there there was never better time to start oh, learning yeah. to program yeah, yeah. than with this with Cop- oh, Chat gpt is okay the it's very you, lazy uh, Cop- is copilot better uh, i would say uh, yes think? yeah yes yeah cuz it's uh, inter- you can get it integrated into the editor oh it's and yeah, yeah i've been using I, it in, in studio ever since i tried it i when i type text without some AI overlord hinting me what I want to actually yeah. write. I'm like typing the letters. So I'm like, what's happening? Why Why isn't the yeah. sentence already finished? It's like spelling now. I'm like, and well, make it right. It's great at the like obvious things. I don't think it will come up with some big uh, like scheme how to code something. Ooh. It's not really, I think, very good at that. But if you add variable health and you start typing uh, function Ooh. do damage, it will do, it will, it's oh, obvious it's what you want. It's great for debugging, yeah. too, actually. Nicholas yeah. is now working on a uh, tower defense game. I'm, oh, really? I just wanted to... I was intrigued by the AI advancements because I haven't coded anything in some time, so mm. I wanted to try it. So I tried ChatGPT. 
I then tried some different language models. What, and you, I, what language were you using? What, what uh, you uh, GD script, which is oh, really? uh, okay. Python. Uh, it's basically Python. Right, so right, right. Okay. Pretty good uh, learning base. Mm. And yeah, the problem I had with ChatGPT and the other like general language models was they didn't know the version I'm using. So maybe uh, the syntax changed over time. And there's a lot of apologizing to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't realize. yeah exactly. Yeah. And you, you tell yeah. it, I'm using this version. And it will say, okay, I will only use this version syntax from now on. Huh. And the next message, it just random. It's a not random word generator, right? So it just pulls yeah. uh, the old syntax. With Copilot, I found it to be much more precise and these errors oh really happen, okay playlists happen yeah i think for me i mean i'm such a i mean i'm literally just an amateur i'm just goofing around with it but but i found i what i liked about it was that it could just it, it made it more accessible to me like exactly just, yeah you know instead of having to look up the syntax every two seconds you get a sense of you know. so so if you uh what is the best way now is to use uh uh anthropic cloud three Oh, really? which has very long context. So even if it's not trained on the language, you can mm -hmm. basically get the documentation for the language and oh. paste it all there and put it there. Oh, and, nice. and it will use use it as a reference. Okay. Is that the rag thing they do? It's the which the where you can add an extra uh, it uses the main model, but it also brings in stuff from another that source. Uh, that is uh, retriever augmented generation. Yeah, it is like if you want to chat with uh, with our help database. Mm. But this is much easier. You just like drop the PDF. Uh, oh, so literally uh, like in ChatGPT, just drop. Yeah, the PDF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ChatGPT has a uh, lower uh, lower context. Mm. So context forget. size. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, right. And so forget. And, yeah. And, and GPT also got very lazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It did. Interesting. I found it got, uh, someone was complaining. I was talking to uh, a young woman who was just starting out in programming at computer science, and she said her complaint with ChatGPT was it, it overcomplicated the coding, that it could have been done much more simply than they yeah. were. Than they were yeah, doing. yeah. I mean, so she liked doing it herself. Yeah. It is, uh, if you want to play around, it's fine. Mm. But for production code, for big things, you still need to know how to do mm. I think it's, like you said, it's great for like, it makes it easier. I don't think mm. it will write anything that you wouldn't be able to write yourself. Or if it does, it's kind of useless to you because you don't know what it does. Yeah, and once something goes wrong. Yeah, you know, but yeah. It, if you can write the code in 10 seconds instead of 20 minutes because you would have to look up the documentation and you would get through the syntax mm. problems. And this way the AI is just like, this is probably what you want to type. Here it is. Mm. And you're just yeah, like, I mean, tap, cool. okay. It's a project like Devin, I think is the name. Basically, you have like a crew of AI agents. Mm -hmm. uh, one is managing it. One can run the code, and you give it uh, um, what do you want, and it like plans it and asks for the code, tries to run it, feeds back the oh, error wow. messages, oh, wow. and like checks if the final uh, product is is the thing. So one AI is checking the output of the other if it's like working correctly oh, wow. and yes. giving new prompts back to other AIs. Yeah, yeah, and basically it's like if you would have a team of people. That's funny. Wow. So we don't need friends anymore. We're, we're, we're ready. Yeah, yeah, we're doing yes. a team of a team of AI bots. Uh, this will be interesting where this goes in, you know, just this year. I mean, a, yeah. a year ago, the GPT-4 wasn't here. Yeah. yeah. How weird is that? Yeah. The other, and the other one I saw people were experimenting with the idea of doing like natural language 3D design where you where you tell it what you want and it can spit out I don't know what code it was using to do that but it, none of it ever worked but it was sort of you know yeah. you get a sense of it I mean it will be it will be much difficult much more difficult to uh, to create the outputs you want especially mm -hmm. for like precise things because if you if you think about text there's like trillions and trillions of tokens of of text they can yeah. they yeah. can train on but for example, the amount of 3D printable models, which is mm -hmm. out there, and I'm pretty sure someone is uh, scraping it all and, and trying yeah, to. probably. Yeah. But it is, if, if you compare the complexity of the 3D models oh, yeah. and, you know, the amount of how many, how many you have, I don't think there is like enough training data mm. for it to be able to do like gen general stuff. Mm. And it will be interesting because, you know, you have uh, some very good, uh, designers which have their uh, distinctive art style, mm. so it will it will be very interesting if somebody comes up with this. If you can uh, like check if they train yeah. on on his data, mm. the problems become way more complex in three D. Where if you have like even images, image to image, like some recognition or shape recognition, 
in 3D, it's like if you delete one vertice, then the data under looks completely, di- or like you rotate the model by five degrees. A- every vertice has a different coordinate now, but it's the same model, but you just rotated it. Mm. So, so the waxer is safe for a little bit, you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah, David, yeah. David, I think your work too. Like, yeah. since yeah. I don't think AI will be taking your work anytime I, soon. I try it uh, so many times, but yeah, no. yeah we are not, not yet at, at the start. Okay, at, think, at the beginning of it. I, I feel like though that it's it's almost added value to the to the artisans, to the artists, to the. I mean, I think people, they they want to be able to make this stuff themselves. You know, I think there's a, I think in a way it's pointed out how valuable that is, that it is, I don't just want that print. I want that print that's been designed and, and painted and done by, you know. I think it's just for a start, like uh, when you start using Tinkercad mm. and then you move to the Fusion or Blender or something mm. like this. So this might be the start for some people. Yeah, some AI something. generated, yeah, uh, like true. not blobby models, yeah. but it's a model you can yeah. kind of use it. Yeah, and then eventually you make it yourself better, sharper edges and sharper, yeah. better yeah. shape. No, that's amazing. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, I again, it's whatever. They're all tools, right? They're all just tools we've just got to figure out how to use. I mean, I'm, I remember, I remember handing it, a, I remember handing it an essay. Is how old I am. Handing in an essay that I'd printed out on my Commodore 64 with my dot matrix printer, and it had screwed up like 50 times, and you have to pull off the things, and it kept getting caught. Anyway, I finally printed out this thing, and I and I handed it in, and they said, "You can't do that. That's cheating. A computer did that." So I had to write the whole thing out by hand because I was so-called cheating because I learned how to use my computer. I learned how to type. I, you know, I you know, it's just it's 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 how. I think this this you know I don't I think it takes a while for sort of the society to pick up on yeah. how these these are. Well, used. eventually society will figure it out. Yeah, but yeah. we are always jumping from one extreme to another before yeah, and yeah. like find find no, this where we find the way. Yeah, yeah. E- even three D printer like lately I find myself more more and more thinking about it just as a tool, even though mm-hmm. like we all say it's a tool. But for a very long time it was such an intense hobby that I was just always printing something oh, that's interesting yeah, that's a good these point. these days i don't feel bad about letting the printer not doing anything for mm. a week and then a thing comes up and i i just it's natural like i have a 3d printer and i can manufacture a three-dimensional thing that perfectly solves the problem yeah and then the printer can just wait for like i don't use my drill every day either so right, right. it's just a tool yeah that's a good point yeah. i think in every workshop i maybe you just have one for some things that's the point. I have um, I have uh, some drywall at the uh, at my cottage, right? And I'm missing the for a screw. Oh yeah, the yeah, the, which the drywall uh, what was anchor. It? Yeah, the anchor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the drywall anchors. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there's two options: go to Prague and buy one, yeah. or print it. That's yeah. that is funny. That's kind of it's a kind of it's a bit like the black box thing again. Once you've opened the black box, once you've printed a couple little tchotchkes and it's like, oh, look, it's a snake and it bends or whatever, you know, then you start going like, oh, you know what, this, I need to, I need a better, a better, uh, you know, connector for this or that. Because you now have got that perspective change, you start going like, oh, great. I mean, like, you know, the coffee machine, our coffee machine isn't working properly. I'm like, oh, great. I just need a little thing to keep that button down. Great. <laughs> 3D print a little thing, yeah. you know, do a few iterations. And I mean, I think that's, yes, there are probably easier ways of doing it, but it's a great way to sort of uh, you stack those skills. You know what I mean? Yeah, we have uh, the same problem in the flat. So I broke the handle of a door, and you just wreck the place. And I said, I can do it a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And so you, you know, you know how it is. You usually work uh, on your projects uh, later at night. Yeah, that's and true. And then you are stuck because you need that one little thing. Yeah, and you would have to wait maybe sometimes over. Over the weekend before yeah. you can get it. Yeah. But if you can print it, you're saved. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's just temporary thing, so you get it working and then you buy the, the real metal yeah. part yeah. or something. But I think that's the other thing is learning iteration as well. The idea that, that, I mean, people seem to, and I think this is a YouTube problem as well, where they go like, okay, we're going to do this. And then boop, it's like it comes out of the oh, oven and it's all cooked. Oh my God. Have you you know? uh, I, I am in fear uh, yeah. Because, you know, I as a maker, I grew up like watching Star Trek, Stargate, but also mm-hmm. Midbusters. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. You yeah, yeah see yeah. them make stuff. Yeah. But now you, you can see like the five minute crafty thing. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Wait, terrible. Where, where, where <laughs> they. <laughs> do, 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 where, where the. But the yeah. things they make there, they don't make sense. Any sense. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No sense. But yeah. I think very often they're doing it on purpose. They just 
they know that they will engage yeah. you that you will you can't wait to see what's he doing wait till you see how it ends yeah. up and, and then like, in the end you're ding, like ding, ding, ding. what is this yeah, yeah, yeah. why and it's always a little musical song and but, yeah and it comes out perfect every time and i think that's so misleading for people like, yeah you know. but we are you know that puts a lot of pressure on us yeah yeah to uh teach people the proper ways how to do mm. the, uh, how to do these things and mm. how to make well even just like the post like you 3d print it and then you you know then you you want to clean it up you want to you know this just this stuff that people don't i don't think they even realize that's part of the process um you know which is nice when you see when the kids get into a young enough they i think they enjoy that as well that there's the more mystery there is that their parents can go Ooh, ah look what they did you know they, they made that themselves i'm like yeah they printed it off printables whatever you know <laughs> you know tell me call me when the kids making his own stuff you know what i mean so which a couple of them are now so it's it's pretty neat um so let me let me ask you a question what was your favorite 3d printing project so far i i know this is gonna sound so nerdy but my well there's a, there was a couple i loved printing wexter's mckay i gotta say that was you know yeah that was, <laughs> yeah it was fantastic because and and that part of that was because i'd never really i'd sort of printed things but i hadn't sort of sort of tried to finish them so i got into i got the you know the rust the rusty's paint and stuff so that was a that was a fun process i, I built a little cardboard place to to paint it and stuff like that but honestly the most satisfying thing i did was this little this little button for my coffee machine because it they it didn't exist there was nothing for it i mean there was it was like you would throw it out you throw out the coffee machine because the thing didn't close and so it wouldn't start the and just the process of like measure i had my little calibers out i'm measuring it and my wife's rolling her eyes and and just coming up with that process was so satisfying i mean it's still kludgy but it's but it was just the idea that i have i have i have thought of something i have i have made it and and i have made it work yeah. and i mean the first few were the first one came out i was like i don't think it's that big you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and then it's like it's not that small you know and then it just stupid little things that you have to learn along the way and it was the perfect size thing so it didn't take a really long time to mm -hmm. do But it allowed me to iterate over the span of like a few days. And it was just, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it was so satisfying. And do you get to push the button every day? And that's it. Every day I close the thing and it just goes, and I'm like, yep, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I made this. So yeah, it yeah. makes you happy every single day. That's it. That's yeah. it. Exactly. Those Until I lose prints. it again. And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those little prints are the best, but yeah. every day it reminds you, I fix this. Yeah. It's just, I mean... And I feel like that's that was always the promise of it too, right? It was like, oh, you need a part, you print it up, you know. So, yeah, it's it was that's I know that sounds silly because I've seen just these beautiful and the stuff you're working on. I'm like, I really I made a button. <laughs> But I th I think your story may mm -hmm. will make a, thousands of people who watch this uh, like say, yeah, I have this project, <laughs> yeah, 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 this kind of project yeah. where where I did this little thing which makes me yeah. happy. Every I think it's yeah. the perfect example of where to wrap it where it can be the smallest thing but if it fixes something yeah. and that's that's fantastic, fantastic well and it's just 3D it's, printing that's the process of inventing too of going like in your head seeing something and then slowly figuring out how that's going to actually actually work and also that the other thing i liked about it was because it was a 3d because you 3d printed it it was one piece that moved which i loved as well that was just sort of again the idea that you could print something that was moved so you yeah that yeah. was yeah so uh, it's, it's fascinating yeah Well, David, thank you so much for joining us. It's oh a God. really, it's very fun to meet, like see you in person. We chatted online, but you, it's, it's not the same. It's, just it's not, not the, the same, same, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope we will have you here in Prague a couple more times. Anytime. Yeah, I think there's the uh, the Stargate intern. I think we should come in, you know, I can break a few things and, you know. Our doors are open. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll be careful. I'll show up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everyone for watching. That's it for this episode and we'll see you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. So Bye. much fun. Thank you. Mm -hmm.